To some, Max was the great white hope who was crowned in shame at the end of last season. To others, he is the fake champion beset by karma, as the opening round of his title defense was an unmitigated disaster. Charles, Carlos and Ferrari kicked off the 2022 season perfectly, as Ferrari raced off to a 1-2 victory, with Leclerc's pole position, fastest lap, lights to flag victory, and driver of the day, proving what we have always known. He is the best of the post-Hamilton generation. On his part, Sir Lewis Hamilton reaffirmed yet again that it's the driver and not the car by punching above the Mercedes's weight to come third and set yet another record for finishing on the podium for 16 consecutive seasons. In comparison, Max and Red Bull returned to their garage bowed and broken as Charles chewed him up and spat him out and thus exposed the emptiness of his hollow title. Expectedly, Max proved yet again that without GPS, gifted position by stewards, he is all hype and no delivery. Sky F1, for their part, are still slavishly overhyping for Stapen during the race and ghosting the truth afterwards. They repeatedly heaped praise on him for actions that were evidence of his shortcomings and his rival superior racecraft, and then ghosted the truth when revealed post-race. Their Sky pundits also ghosted evidence that they had during the race that contradicted Max's rants. This contrasts sharply with the way the Sky pundits routinely downplayed the extraordinary feats that Sir Lewis used to perform during races. During the race on Sunday, Sky F1 waxed lyrical about the tremendous speed that Max was suddenly able to reach as he blasted past Charles in his bonsai attempts to overtake without realizing that Charles was in fact outsmarting Max by deliberately breaking early to give Max the corner so that he could then take advantage of the upcoming DRS line to retake the lead. Critically, Max and Sky F1 repeatedly bought the Charles dummy, hook line and sinker as successive attempts by Max ended with Charles immediately retaking the lead on each occasion. Unsurprisingly, the overhyped and gung-ho Max went on to flat spot his tires during his final unsuccessful attempt. Significantly, Sky F1 were not as effusive of Leclerc's racecraft as they had been of Max's folly when Charles broke it down for them during the post-race interviews. Perhaps this was because they are so committed to propping up a fake champion that they cannot see when a true champion is taking him apart in front of their eyes. The irony of Max's supposedly daring overtaking being damning evidence of a recklessness and naivety, unbefitting of a world champion, and conclusive evidence of Charles, demonstrating racecraft and coolness under pressure worthy of a true champion, appears to have been totally lost on Sky F1. In a second demonstration of the Max hype train, when Verstappen came out of the second pit stop, he was venting about how he would no longer obey the team's instructions to save his tires during the outlaps, because if he had gone as fast as he could have, he would have taken He's powering his way down the main straight. You can see him there. Charles Leclerc, finally freed of the 80 kilometers an hour pit lane limiting speed, is back out onto the track, and the Ferrari fans absolutely love that. Nasty stuff in our, no, in our grandstand. Not at all. But, uh... Okay, this is now two times that I take it easy on the outlap, and I could have easily been in front. I'm never ever doing it again. Okay, he's getting a bit het up, Max never Verstappen ever. there. Never, never ever is a very long time. When Sky F1 was subsequently presented with evidence that contradicted Max's inflated opinion of his ability, they failed to point this out to Max in any of their post-race interviews, and to date have remained silent on the fact that this critical evidence of the driver's opinions exceeding his ability is not the stuff champions are made of. It is a measure of the extent of the delusional hype bubble around Max that he blamed team orders for his inability to undercut the leader that he had never been able to get close to on the track rather than appreciate the fact that he only came close to achieving a Pyrrhic undercut because of the speed of his pit crew and an error on the part of his rival's pit crew. It is also instructive that when Christian Horner dismissed Max's complaint in a post-race interview on Sky, Helmut Marco subsequently came out in support of Max. Question to uh, Charles. It looks like uh, the first uh, undercut of Max Verstappen looked very fast and the second one not that fast did you work differently on your second outlap when you have the second pit stop 
Yeah, so on the first one, I think I did a small mistake in my in-lap and also the we had a bit of a problem on the front right at the pit stop, which cost us a little bit of, of lap time and that puts uh, us in a bit of a tricky situation uh, for, for the after the first pit stop. Um, and I didn't really know how much grip I will gain from these new tyres. So also on the out lap, I was not pushing as much as I could and was probably a bit under the limit and, uh, and Max was right behind. Uh, he had already done one lap with the tyres, so he was already pretty much on the limit of the tyres. And, and it was very tricky to keep him behind, uh, but I managed to do so, hopefully. Um, and then on the second one, it was just a bit smoother. The in-lap was a little bit better. I think I still had some uh, some tires left, so I could I could push. Um, and the pit stop was also, was also better, so it was a bit more under control. And and we probably also took a bit more margin, uh, seeing how the, the the first one went. In another demonstration of Sky F1 overhyping Max, Charles poured cold water on Sky's post-race suggestion that. He would have been somewhat concerned about Max after the safety car restart at the closing stages of the race. There were some very tense moments on track with Max after the first stop, with the safety car restart after that, but everything was managed well and I could bring the, the victory home. It did, it seemed very smooth and under control, but do you think if it weren't for his reliability issues, do you think he could have got ahead of you after the restart or did he feel under threat? I don't think so, but but yeah, you never know. I mean, uh, at the restart, I think I... I had gotten a very, I had gotten, is that, is that English? That'll do. Okay. You, you can say anything right now. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, you understood me. Uh, I, I did a really, really good restart. So anyway, I think it will have been difficult for him to, uh, to, to overtake. But, uh, and after that, the rhythm was, was very strong. So whenever I had margin, I knew that I could more or less manage the gap behind. But uh, obviously, it's been tricky whenever there was this, this battle on track. The writing has been on the wall since Austria 2019 when a newly installed Michael Red Bull Marcy gifted for Stapen victory at the Red Bull ring under the cover of Let Them Race. Since then, a suitably chastened Charles has always gotten the better of Max whenever they were in close contest. Notably, in the following race at Silverstone, where Charles, in a slower Ferrari was able to hold Max in a faster Red Bull Honda up in an epic duel which lasted for several laps and included a pit stop where Max temporarily overtook Charles because the Red Bull crew did a faster stop. However, Charles immediately overtook Max during the outlap as Verstappen overcooked a corner. A desperate Max was then unable to overtake Charles on track and was forced to exceed track limits to effect an overtake. Unsurprisingly, Michael Red Bull Marcy again used the let them race cover to allow Max to retain the position. And predictably, the FIA validated this obvious bias and subsequently doubled down on it by awarding Max an action of the year prize for exceeding track limits to overtake a slower Charles. In our opinion, it was Charles, who was voted the driver of the day, that should have received the plaudits for that epic duel, which was testament to his superior racecraft and FIA's bias towards Max. Last Sunday, Max was again the beneficiary of a gifted position by the stewards when an apparently unrepentant FIA replaced the virtual safety car with a full safety car, thereby putting Max right on Charles' tail. A position that Max, Allah Abu Dhabi, had been unable to secure on his own during the race. Beguiled by his own hype, a GPS-assisted Max came alongside Charles in a move that Brundle fawningly described as his favorite trick, just before it dawned on him that by doing that, Max had unwittingly put himself at a disadvantage for the restart. In another demonstration of poor racecraft, Max failed to appreciate that by coming inside the Ferrari, he had unwisely tightened his angle for the next corner. A superior Charles was fully aware of this and used that opportunity to pull away comfortably at the restart. It therefore appears that Max is still laboring under the delusion that it was his driving skill that granted him victory in Abu Dhabi rather than the illegal GPS of the unfair disparity between his fresh tyres and Lewis's 40-lap-old ones. Ironically, not only did a calm and collected Charles have a hot and bothered Max in check for the whole race, but both Max and Sky F1 were so caught up in their own hype bubble that they did not realise this during the race and glossed over the significance after the fact. It is indicative of the delusional hype bubble around Max that the Sky Pundits got overexcited by Max charging around like a rampaging bull, 
without recognizing that Charles was directing him like a matador in a bull ring. When the car and driver eventually succumbed to the matador, the Sky Pundits put it down to bad luck rather than credit the matador. But everybody knows that reliability is a key component of motorsport, and the reason for pushing your rival beyond the limit. Charles had the perfect race as he started from pole, led from lights to the flag, had the fastest lap and one driver of the day. To crown it all up, he toyed with Max at every opportunity without Max even realizing that he was being toyed with. Liberty Media and Sky F1 are being hoisted by their own petard on live television. They have become hostages to the fake champion that they created by their outrageous engineering of the results of the Abu Dhabi finale. They are now at risk of their misplaced faith in an overhyped driver being exposed on live television by a better driver in a resurgent Ferrari. Should Mercedes develop a car capable of competing against the Ferrari, then we could have a three-way scrap with Max possibly finishing outside the top three. Karma appears to be coming full speed ahead in a red Ferrari. How long can Sky F1 continue to gloss over Max's shortcomings? How long before the courtiers start to desert the naked fake champion?